What's up guys, Jeremy here with Care Services and Blamo Tutorials. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of programming and logic. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more intense later on, but I want to go over a couple of the, the, the simple part of it to help maybe clarify a few things for people. And I know there's a few of you that are going to be watching this that are going to gain a lot from this. Uh, intro to Computer and lo uh, Logic is a uh, computer programming and logic should I say is a major course elective that you have to take if you're in the web technology networking uh, I, I know computer programming especially but the main point is to learn how to think logically programming comes in logic uh, the first step that you have to know and a lot of people don't really pay attention to this is the point that computers are stupid they do not know anything they cannot do anything you've got to tell them what to do and when to do it so without someone like me programming something and creating the software the computer would just sit there going duh so keep that in mind the other thing to programming and logic that you got to understand is you know, what is logic? You know, and here's what the uh, dictionary.com says. It's a science that investigates the principles governing correct or reliable inference. And to infer, you know, basically is to derive from by reasoning, conclude or judge from premises or evidence. So basically you are coming up with logical stuff in logic and you're trying to use all these principles of your judgment and the reasoning of how it would be and when you're doing that that's logic coming to a decision am I gonna go left am I gonna go right you're using logic to say which one's gonna be a better choice but when doing it there's a, a I guess it'd be an acronym I could be wrong on that word but I'm not an English major but uh, it's called KISS K-I-S-S -S. and it's guys keep it simple stupid okay Programming logic, just keep it simple. You can't start a program at the end. You know, you're given the basis of what you're going to be doing. Like today, we're going to build a program on how to wake up. You don't just automatically hop in the shower. You've got to first, you know, you got to go through, okay, what are my steps to get to the shower? You know, first got to wake up. I've got to open my eyes. You know, if you have an alarm clock, turn the alarm clock off. You know, get out of bed, get your clothes, walk to the shower. So you got to go through every logical step. You can't just say, hey, I wake up and automatically I'm in the shower. You know, we're not in the future. There's no thought process of magically disappear and reappear somewhere else. So keep it simple, stupid. Remember to always break everything down to every detail of what you're going to be doing so if you're supposed to be adding two numbers you got to know those two numbers you can't leave one out so you got to know okay well first I got to get those numbers then I need to input those numbers into a variable then I need to add those variables together and then come up with my solution so we'll go through all that as we continue on into this intro to programming and logic by care services and Blamo tutorials all right, first guys, we're going to go ahead and talk about flow charting, what it is, what it does, why we're using it. The first, you know, the first thing I always do is I always work with pseudocode and, you know, I code it out or I write it out in pseudocode. And then when I come back to flow chart it, it's already done. I'm just copying and pasting basically and then adding my displays. And for those who don't know what pseudocode is or they ask, what in the heck is pseudocode? Pseudo means fake. So pseudo coke is a fake coke. So we're doing pseudo code, so that is a fake code. But uh, there's a little tangent, a little something, something for you. Today I'm using Smart Draw. Uh, most people use Visio, and most of the people that are needing this tutorial will be using Visio. It's the same thing, they have the same uh, flow chart symbols. I just got it. I like working with Smart Draw. I've used it for a while, so I know. What I've did here, though, is I've built out all the symbols that you would use in a 
flowchart for your intro to programming logic, at least for the ones who are asking the first few chapters. It may get a little bit more intense and you may be using a lot more structure, uh, tree structure, but we'll go over that when we get to it. But to start off with, you always have to have your start and end, which is always a noble. Uh, you know, start and then your end always at the bottom. That's pretty simple. Where it says start, I would always go ahead and encapsulate, you know, put my program name in there and uh, some parentheses. So if I was going to do a total, what's going to be the name of it, and then close it out with some parentheses like that. Alright, uh, your data is your parallelogram, and that's for your input output. So if you want to display something, once you display it or you're asking, I need a number from 1 to 10, you're also going to use that data for an input. So you're inputting the, the variable that you're trying to get here. So here I'm displaying, can I have a number between 1 and 10? The user will then enter a number from 1 to 10, and then we input that into the same style. So right here I have an input uh, number. And then that number that the user used is a number that's stored inside of this. Uh, now I, here, this is a process. Processes are used to declare your uh, variables, to calculate something. I, I use the word calculate, but you're going to use the word set. So I'm saying calculate total, which equals tax times purchase. You would just like, you would put set total equals so you're setting whatever your variable is up here so in this case I'm using total so up here I would have declared a variable and we'll show you this here in a second in the next tutorial but here I would set that number in this so here I have declare a real uh, total using real as my my type you can use integer double float you know, if you use a string uh, have it as a string so uh, if you don't know <laughs> what what your type sets are here, you know, integer, double, real, string, you need to go back and read that or ask, and I'll do a tutorial on that as well. But, so you got your process. Now here's where everybody's screwing up, because in, in a beginning few chapters of the college course that you're taking, you're not doing decisions yet. Everybody's wanting to do a loop. A loop is a decision. You're looping through something, so you're asking a Boolean type thing. Either it's on or off, true or false, yes or no. You know, Boolean is more true or false, so but that way you get what I'm saying. So in a decision type uh, flowchart, you would have one coming to the left and one going to the right. So you have a decision to make. Do I go to McDonald's? If it's yes, I put true this way and come down and say I go to McDonald's. If it's no or false, I go this way and I say no I don't go to McDonald's and then I have another structure here of asking or telling or you know whatever the case may be. We'll, we'll go into that one here uh, later on. Uh, your module. Now I know each programming language causes something different. You, you have like functions in C++, you have uh, think what it is in Java but you know functions modules uh, methods I think is what it is in Java I can't remember so method is what this would be called uh, basically you're using a function now and we'll go over function in the next tutorial when we code out a uh, show a pseudocode but uh, so you have a function and then it would contain all this but you would actually instead of using a, an end here you would do either RTC or maybe uh, let's do, uh, return is a popular one. I don't know why I guess I hit my wrong button there. Uh, that's a popular one. So either RTC, return to the caller, or just plain return, whichever one you want works just as good. Just never put end inside of a function because if you do that and you put an end down here, the program stops immediately. So if you've got like five or six more steps to go and you end it in the first function that you call, you're done. So uh, keep that in mind. We'll, and again, we'll go over that here in a little bit. Now, this is where some people got confused on uh, the way a certain teacher is talking about connectors. 
and it, it does get a little bit confusing because there are actually four page connectors, not just one. And, not, and I believe he explained it as being only one. So it, it does get a little confusing if that's what's explained to you. You do as your teacher would tell you to do. Although normally you would have an off page connector, which means uh, you're going to a brand new page. So if you're going a page structure going left to right, you would just do next page. Uh, on this one, what I believe was explained is you have your home base here and you put a one in it. Off pages are always numbered by the page number that it is on. So if you're up here and you call a function and it's on page two, then it has to go to page two to pull that all that code and bring it back over here. But down here, you may be on page five on a function you're calling. So you'll have to go all the way over here to page five and pull that over. So that's just, you know, one thing to think about. So these are your off page. The on page connector or the same page connector, as you see here, it's just, it's a circle. And I've, add, I've actually added an A because in uh, SmartDraw, you're not allowed, you can't, all you can do is this on the uh, page connectors. It goes below and still, I'll move that over. So it goes below. So it's saying we're going down to page two, we're going over to page two, whatever the case may be. Or if you're on this one, we're going back up. But uh, on this one, you have a page A. Now what you're doing here, I'm gonna copy and paste this real fast. So here we have a long page. We come down here and the code is here. So you've got all, you know, So here you got your function, you're coming over here to A. So what I'm doing here with a connector is I've stopped my program, my, my flow charting right here because I ran out of room. So I'm gonna move over to the next line. So what the connector does is you put the connector here saying, okay, we're gonna move on to another line to keep this flow chart in a rhythm. So instead of you know, having all these like this, we're gonna just, Get rid of that, have your A here, and what you would do is you would connect your function to your A right there, and that's it. When you start your new line worth of flow charting, you start with your A saying, okay, we're connecting to our A connector. So it goes down here, stops at A, then moves over to where it finds the next A connector, and then keeps following through. So there you go, that, that's a brief synopsis of all this. If it is confusing, which it probably is, we can break each thing down into a longer tutorial. I'm just trying to save a little time. We're only allowed 15 minutes on a tutorial. So I'm trying to speed through this as fast as I can, but still give you a little bit more of the logic of what we're doing. And as we, I, as I show you the pseudocode that I come up with, on our next uh, program here, then we'll we'll delve into some of this a little bit more and really dive into some logic of what what these things are doing and how we move things around a little bit. All right. So if you got any questions, comment, rate, and subscribe, please, and build us back up a little bit and uh, just show a little love for us. All right. So that's it for today, and we will start our next tutorial with actually, we'll start a program. We'll do it. We'll do a program that we use uh, functions. That way, we can see the return call. We can use the connectors. Uh, I'm not going to do a decision yet because y'all aren't there yet. So we'll we'll have some input output. We'll have some process. We'll do functions or modules or methods, whatever you want to call it. Probably use a couple of connectors because we'll have to connect things. And uh, that's about it, guys. So uh, if you have any questions, let us know. All right. Have a good day.